and Mosley. Look at his cute little sweater that he got for Christmas. Can you see it? Is he not the cutest little thing ever? So today I have a pretty big horror haul for you. I have some stuff that I got in the past few months that I haven't showed you yet or were on like my Instagram or something if you follow me there, but I haven't shown you in a video. And then I have some stuff that I got for Christmas that's horror related. And then I have a book haul. So I have a lot of stuff to show you guys. I'm so excited. So let's just jump into it. I think I'm going to start with the stuff and then I'll do the book haul at the end. I'll leave timestamps if you guys want to skip around. But let's start with stuff that I've had for a while that I probably just haven't shown you on this channel. First, I got these The Shining shoes and they have room 237 on the back. They say red rum, they have a little shiny thing. And then in the tongues, they have the little maze, which is so awesome. I got these in October when they came out and I am obsessed with these. I think they're the coolest shoes. However, they had different shoes depending on where you bought them. And so in November, I noticed that another package came and I could tell that it was shoes. And my husband's like, oh, I got you a Christmas present and I was having just a really rough month. So he let me open them early, but he got me these, which are really cool. I don't remember where, they're both Vans. I can't remember where I got them, but I think they were sold at different stores. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know where to get them, but if you look around, I'm sure you could find them. So these ones are just, they just say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, which is really cool. I love the yellow ones. They're my favorite shoes, but they are pretty bright. And so when I'm wearing like a horror hat and a horror backpack and a horror shoes and a horror shirt, it's like, okay, we get it. She likes horror. So I like that these are a little bit more dulled down and that you can kind of wear them with everything. So I love these. I think that they're fantastic. So anyways, he got those for me. For Christmas but I ended up opening them last month. The next thing that I got was also, no this must have been after October. I think this was in early November. I got this guy and this is just a Chucky backpack and it looks like you're carrying Chucky in it and it just says Chucky he wants you for a best friend and then there's a little zipper that's a little butcher knife which is really cute. Can you see it? And then it's just like yellow and the straps are red. It's a really good quality backpack. And I saw this and I'm like, oh, I love that. But at the store, there was another one and I was debating over which one to get. And it was really hard for me to make the decision. I ended up getting the Chucky one. And then after I left, I'm like, I should have gotten the other one. But I just thought this one was so unique. And it is. Every time I wear this out, someone says something about how cool my backpack is. This guy also in the bookstore was like, I don't want to be creepy, but can I take a picture of your backpack? I'm like, yes, of course. <laughs> so uh, that is this guy. I think that this is really awesome. I just thought this backpack was so cool and unique and awesome. So now, fast forward to Christmas, I open up a Christmas present and I'm like, oh, it's the second backpack that I wanted, which is this guy right here. And it is the Scream backpack. And not only is it a Scream backpack, but Ghostface glows in the dark. It's the coolest backpack ever. This one has a little Scream knife as the thing. I'm so excited to wear this every single day. And so now I can kind of switch back and forth between which backpack I feel like wearing. I've already put all my stuff in here because I just, I was so excited. I opened it and I'm like, oh, my mother-in-law got me this for Christmas. Now, I also saw a full-size backpack, which I can't find my backpack that I had for college, which I guess makes sense because that was a long time ago. But I thought I had some sort of backpack. I have no bags to like put anything in. So I'm not joking, like for our wedding, I brought just grocery bags, like Trader Joe's bags with my clothes in them because I have no bags and so I saw a full-size backpack at that store and I'm like that would be good to have something like that for when we go if my husband ever gets a freaking day off and we can go on a honeymoon or like because I really do want to go back to college so hopefully one day I can but anyways um I saw this one in there and I just thought it was so cute and like this would be perfect to just have for you know trips and stuff like that and my husband actually picked this guy up for me for Christmas too which I thought was really awesome and um yeah I think it's cute it just says collect all the good guys accessories and then just says good guys and then there's little chuckies all over so I thought this was pretty neat as well. And then just for Christmas, I also got these shirts. This one said, I think it says, I'll be there for you. And then I also got this guy, which I think just says friends. And then there's a bunch of horror guys on there, which is cute. And then also my friends, I, it wasn't for Christmas. They just picked me up a shirt and they gave it to me last time I went to their house. And I 
do not know where I put it. Where did I put that? I'll get up and look for it in a second, but... And then the last thing that I got, my mother-in-law also got me this Nightmare Before Christmas blanket. I don't know if you could see it, but it's just Jack and Sally. And it's just a black and white cute little blanket throw thing. Let me just take a quick gander around and see if I can find it. Oh, look at that. It's right here. Oh, oh geez. Okay, so this is the shirt that they got me. It says the boogeyman and then at the bottom it says oh the boogeyman followed me home and I thought it was cute so there's that guy now off to the book haul okay so the first book that I got was a Tony Hillerman dance hall of the dead and this one was a dollar at my used book these are this is a used bookstore haul so this one is a science fiction book and it just says on the back, Dance Hall of the Dead is a stunning novel that blends American Indian legend and lore together with mystery, drama, and suspense, which I think is what Tony Hillerman is kind of like known for, is that uh, using American Indian culture and then like, you know, uh, science fiction kind of stuff. The action begins with a bizarre ritual slaying of an Indian youth and builds as Joe Leoporn, a Navajo reservation police, tracks the suspected killer through the beautiful and savage American Southwest into the... And then the sticker is covering some of the stuff. I can't make out what it says. Into the probably deepening something of Indian mis uh, mysticism and murder laced with something. Dance Hall of the Dead echoes uh, something. <laughs> and death that is shocking, compelling, and something. <laughs> Why do you guys watch my videos? Okay, anyways, this is the first book that I got. It was just a dollar. The next guy that I picked up, oh, was Independence Day. And this is... Uh, now a major motion picture from 20th Century Fox. And this is by Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich and Stephen Molstad. Jeez, three writers. I didn't know that this was a book before it was the movie. At least that's what it sounds like. I want to see when this was published. 96. When did Independence Day come out? Wasn't it in the 90s? Let's see when Independence Day came out because I don't know about this. Oh, Roland, Roland Emmerich is the director. And then Devin, Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich are the writers, but it doesn't, I don't know, I'm confused. This is now, this has to, have, this had to have come out after, 96. The movie came out in 96. I don't know, you guys tell me, did this come out? I think, I think that this might be like a novelization is what it sounds like, although it doesn't say it on the cover. Let me know if you guys know, but anyways, I know a lot of people hate novelizations, but I grew up reading a novelization of one of the Nightmare on Elm Street films and I loved it so I do like these kind of books as well and I was hoping I could do like a novelization video just talking about specific novels but anyways this was a dollar too which is why I picked it up I'm still not sure which one came first there are pictures from the movie in it so I don't know a little confused because usually it tells you one or the other and by saying now a major motion picture it kind of implies that the book came first but I don't know. Next up we have this guy and this is called The Time Dissolver by Jerry Soule. This is an original science fiction novel of the power of a machine to transform men's minds. But look at this cover. How awesome is that cover? This one was $1.50 and it just says a man awakens with a clear memory of, of the date of his date the night before. He rises to go about his business as usual and he finds that he is in a room he has never seen before. He looks in the mirror and it it is his face he sees, all right, but aged. He went to sleep on May 15th of one year and woke up the next day as expected, but 11 years later. The woman in the bed beside him awakes also in terror at the sight of him and she too went to sleep on May 15th. Neither has seen the other in his life. I don't remember why I picked this one up because I bought these like two months ago, but I don't, I, it must've been the cover because I don't even think I read the back of that one. But I just love these really old science fiction books at my used bookstore. Some of them have proven to be quite entertaining. So let me know if you guys have heard of that bad boy. Next book I picked up was Bird Box. This of course is a movie. This was a book first I know. And it just says, don't open your eyes. A novel by Josh Mellerman. This one, I so I didn't love the movie Bird Box. But I figured that I would give the book a try. And maybe I would like this one more. This one was $3.00. And I mean, I'm sure you guys know the story of it, so I don't think I have to read this, but yeah, $3 for a hard book, a hard cover book. I was like, yeah, I'll pick that up and read it and see what it's like. I think I have per pe heard people say that they preferred the book to the movie. So hopefully that's good. Let me know if you guys have read that. 
The next one that I got was Ramsey Campbell's The Count of Eleven. The little quote down here, it says, if Silence of the Lamb holds the modern serial kill killer up for inspection, The Count Eleven takes us right inside the head. And then this is just what the cover looked like. The cover grabbed me. Obviously, Ramsey Campbell is big on horror, but I don't think I have any of his novels. I have a collection of his short stories, I think, but I don't think I have just a full novel of his. Um, did I say how much it, I paid for it? It was $3. And it says, The Darkest Nightmare is a serial killer, committing grisly murders for reasons we do not understand. This is the territory of The Count of Eleven, Ramsey Campbell's novel of ultimate terror. Jack Orchard is the stalker, as alien as Hannibal Lecter, as familiar as your next door neighbor. His motive? To understand that, you have to learn to think like Jack. If you number each letter in his name with its position in the alphabet, they sum to 92, and 9 and 2 add up to 11. But it isn't as though he lets numerology make his choices for him. Things are going well for Jack. He and his wife and daughter plan to move into a larger house as soon as there's a sold, and his video rental business is beginning to thrive. Then comes the chain letters, telling him to turn 111, luck into good. I don't know if it's 111 or I-11. By sending copies to 13 people. He laughs. Jack's a big believer in laughter. Quick to clown around and doesn't do it. That's the day his shop burns down. The next day Jack discovers that his credit card is over the limit but he didn't run the charges. Jack rereads the, lever, the letter. Carefully he picks 13 recipients for the phone, from the phone book and mails them letters just as the clock strikes 11. His good luck gets worse. Worst, something must be done. Soon Jack begins to do it. Ellipses. So it just, I don't know, it seems like a an interesting, uh, like what are these called? Oh yeah, chain letters. I, I I mean, that was definitely before my time, but I do remember like chain emails. Like if you, if you get this email and don't send it out. You'll die. And this was published in, oh, 1992. So that is that book. It sounds interesting. Let me know if you guys have read any Ramsey Campbell novels. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. <gasps> I forgot it. Oh, I forgot I got this. Okay, so this is Harlan Ellison's Death Bird Story. So this is a collection of short stories. This was also $3. And I do have a few things that I got from Harlan Ellison as well. I don't remember if they're novels or short stories, but I do have a few of his books that I got from the used bookstore. Um, this just said it's 19 original tales. Published between 1960 and 74, gritty nails to flush stories that take that take as their theme the strange new god of our day. The gods of freeway and cash flow and new car show, showrooms of slot machines. Okay, so it's just a book of short stories. However, when I opened this bad boy up after I got home, I saw that it was signed by Harlan Ellison. And at first I was like, this can't be real because he signed it like over his name. It just doesn't seem like the author would sign it there. But then I googled Harlan Ellis Ellison's signature and I saw a photo of him signing over his name. And so I thought, is this a signed copy? And guys, this is if this is real, this is the second signed copy I've gotten from my used bookstore. This was $3 and the other one I think was like a dollar, dollar fifty, and the other one was uh, Robert Block, the author of Psycho. It wasn't Psycho that was signed, but still how cool is that? So what do you guys think? Do you think this was actually signed by the author and they just missed it or what? I don't know, but it's just crazy that I keep finding these signed copies there. I don't know. I'm really excited for this guy. I also enjoy the cover as well. So there we go. A potentially signed copy of a book. This one I have Into the Mummy's Tomb. I have been a bit on a mummy kick, at least I was in October. And so I saw this and I was like, ah, I gotta pick this bad boy up. And this is just ancient mystery and terror unearthed by the world's greatest writers. So you have Anne Rice, Bram Stoker, H.P. Lovecraft, Elizabeth Peters, Tennessee Williams, Agatha Christie, Ray Bradbury, and Edgar Allan Poe. And it uh, just seems like stories about mummies, which I'm down for. And I just realized which Edgar Allan Poe story was in here. But anyways, I just thought that this was fun. And then the last thing, my friends, which I'm also very excited to talk about, is this bad boy. This is Dean Koontz's Mr. Murder. So I have already actually read this guy, but it just says, because he has a happy marriage, two adorable small daughters, and a successful career, mystery writer Martin Stillwater counts himself as a lucky man. But all this is shattered when a stranger breaks into his house one rainy afternoon to announce, you stole my life, my wife, no, you stole my wife, my life, and my children, I want them back, claiming to be the real Martin Stillwater. Okay, my camera stopped recording, so I'm not sure where it left off, but this is Dean Koontz's Mr. Murder. I'm gonna talk about this in a future video of Christmas or no a winter haul winter book recommendations video and the only reason I picked this guy up was because it had 
a snowflake on it so I wanted to read it in December but let me know what your favorite Dean Koontz book is because I have been sleeping on some Dean Koontz. I've been sleeping on the Koontz man and I have never read a Dean Koontz book and that book was so fantastic, well written, super engaging. I really loved it so if you guys could give me some recommendations I would really really love that so I could pick up more at my used bookstore. I can't remember if I told you but that one was three dollars. I don't remember what the price of everything was because like I said I picked up those books in October but I have more horror book hauls coming up. I have stacks on stacks on stacks of horror books for you and I will see you on Thursday with another horror video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate and if you didn't I just hope you had a good week and I will see you next time. Bye.